Today you see a garment a lot out of my comfort zone and it's not like I've never worn this type of garment. I have, but the last time was probably my 20s. So it's been over two decades since I've made a long skirt. It's got a slit on the sides or on both sides. Super easy to make for woven fabric. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I'm going to share a skirt. Now I mentioned that it's out of my comfort zone and it's not the style of skirt that's out of my comfort zone, it's actual length of it and I've been wearing short skirts for decades. I think when I was younger I had a more varied style that was more open to wearing longer skirts. The 90s, the mid 2000s ish and then I just settled on the shorter skirt right above the knee and that's how it's continued until right now. And this is a new pattern from Pattern Emporium called Coastal Side Split Skirt. I think this style is super classic and you could wear it for decades to come. I was wearing these exact type of skirts <laughs> back when I used to make them when I was younger. So it was major throwback times for me in my head while I was sewing this. And this skirt's really cool, it's really comfortable, it's pull up, you don't have to put any closure. It's not fitted at the waist, it's nice and comfortable. You can either sew a waistband that's made with the same fabric and put an elastic inside, or you can sew on a yoga waistband and use a neat fabric for that. So I love the two options because I usually tend to sew in a yoga waistband whether a pattern has it or not. So the fact that this one has it I think is really cool. And where the waistband hits, it's up to you. You can sew it a high waist or a low waist. You'll find those two cut lines on the pattern. So if you like wearing it below your waist or sort of at the high hip, you can do that as well. I would never do that, but I know some people like doing that. So the options are there. It's a straight silhouette. So it's not A-lined, it's not a pencil skirt, it's not full, it's just right. And then of course, how the name says, side split skirt, you'll find one on one side or you can sew them on both sides. That's up to you. The finish on the inside is really, really clean with a mitered corner with a double fold. There are sort of two length options in the pattern as per the original design. One is midi, it'll hit your calf and the other one is at the ankle. But then there are also shortened and lengthened lines there for you to be able to modify that. And on the front you have pretty biggish patch pockets that are super easy to sew. Because the coastal side split skirt is a brand new pattern, it's 15% off through Monday noon, but in Australia, this area of the world is that's around Sunday night-ish. And it's not just this skirt, there are so many other patterns that are also 15% off. Toppers that would go with this skirt, and I've already made so many of them and have videos about them. So I'll leave that link down below so you can see the sale page where all the patterns are that are 15% off, plus the new skirt, and I'll leave you the links for the content I already have my pattern emporium playlist if you use my affiliate link and you don't pay anything extra but it does really help me out with all the work I do here on YouTube this style is for woven fabric you know sometimes woven designs can work for neat fabrics in this case I don't know if I'd be keen to make this in a neat fabric I think it could be really floppy it just depends on the fabric and the mitered corners might not be so easy to manage with a neat fabric like it is on a woven so I would stick to the wovens and just use nice fabrics have some drape although so drape is not essential. You could use 100% linen if you wanted, cotton, chambray, like a sea saka, like denim, a shirting. Those will not have any drape and those would work. Or you can use some that have some drape, like a rayon linen blend or a tensile or twill that would be really nice, a rayon twill. Maybe even a nice crepe suiting fabric if you wanted and maybe even a wool suiting if it has a little bit of drape, I think it would be really nice. So you can have quite a big choice of fabrics here and I think if you made it in a light suiting or a wool suiting material like a wool crepe you could just make this style for winter as well and wear boots underneath so I think it can be really versatile and it's not a winter or a summer pattern in my opinion. I tend to gravitate towards fabric with drape you know because they just feel nice and I went to a really safe choice, which is a rayon linen blend. It's mainly rayon, there's only a little bit of linen in there, which gives it the texture and a little bit of extra weight. And the flow of the fabric is amazing. It's black and white. <laughs> I'm just trying to push the fabric choice to something that I'm gonna feel really, really comfortable with because the style is already sort of out of my comfort zone. So if I get a really nice fabric, with a style that I'm not used to, I'm most likely to wear it more. That's my reasoning. <laughs> you need a little bit of interfacing for the facings of the pockets and if you wanna do the option that has the fabric waistband with the elastic inside, you can choose between one and a half or two inch 
wide elastic. The sizing's from 4 to 30 Australian, and that goes up to a heap of 58 and 3 quarter inch. The fit is sort of semi-fitted. It's not fitted, it's not loose. You'll find about 4 inches of positive ease at the hips, and your hip measurement, that is the base for you to choose your size. Kate has designed this so that the waist has minimal ease. So it's basically just enough for you to get it over your hips. So you do need to get it past your hips. So that's why that is the most important size for you to look at in the size chart. In the pattern, you will find finished garment measurements for the waist and the hips. So if your waist size is like one size smaller than your hips on the chart and you want to blend in, have a look at the finished garment measurement. Make sure that the finished waist is going to be enough for your hips to go through because you can't have the opening of the skirt be smaller than your hips. I didn't make any test garment. You know, this is a simple type of fit. So I don't think you need to make a test garment. <laughs> so I just went by my measurements and I made a size 18 based on my full hip. But you'll see later when you see it on, I think I could go down to a 16. I think I would like a closer fit. I think ease is a personal preference. And I think for the fabric which I chose, that is rayon and drapey, I think the extra ease is okay, it's acceptable. But if I'd made this in a linen or something a little more structured, I would definitely want this to be closer to my body. And then I would make a size 16 instead. You also find length measurements there. You know, the midi version that hits the calf and the ankle version. And based on those measurements, that's how I determined how much length I wanted to add to my skirt. I'm sort of black and white with skirts. And I mean, there's no gray area. So that equates to super long skirt or short. So nothing in between. If I get a length in between, I start feeling really uncomfortable because I saw the finished measurement there was not going to be long enough for what I like. I knew I wanted to add four inches. So on the skirt, you'll find two areas where you can lengthen or shorten. One is above the side slit, so sort of around the full hip area. And that is a good place to take away or add if you find that that slit is going to be too short. So I measured how long that was and where that was going to hit my body and I thought the slit was going to just be a little high. Now, remember when you're walking around, your slit can have a certain length, but then when you sit down, the skirt tends to ride up and then the slit ends up being way shorter when you're sitting so I do think about that so I decided to add I decided to add four inches of length extra in total but I divided it in two areas so above I added two so that my slit would end up being a little lower and then at the lower shorten and lengthen line I added the other two inches. When you print out your pattern and you look at the shapes of the skirt you see that there's one big piece for the front and one big piece for the back they are not the same. The back is a little wider than the front piece. So if you want to sew a skirt that just has one side split, then you would just cut the front and the back extended like that. Make sure you have the right side of your fabric facing up and your pattern facing up, you know, with all the letters there are there looking up at you and you'll be fine. You will end up with mirrored fronts and backs so that your split ends up on the correct side. So that is the option that I took. That is the way I cut my fabric. But if you want to sew the version that has the slits on both sides, and you'll see a line in the center then you just take your pattern piece and fold it in half and then just cut out the half that has all the extra seam allowance for your mitered corners and then you cut your front and your back on the fold you end up with slits on both sides so I have filmed some sewing for you I'm mainly focusing on general construction and this mitered corner that is different to other mitered corners I've shown you because this one has a double fold so it's not a single fold inside it takes a few extra steps but the finish inside is super nice This is the front piece of the skirt. The back piece is similar, but it's not exactly the same. And the only reason I'm doing just one side slit is because my width of the fabric wasn't enough to get the two slits. So that's fine, you can choose either or. If you're just gonna have one side slit like this, then you cut the whole pattern piece extended. And I've got the fabric wrong sides up here because I was just making the marks and stuff, but you're supposed to cut it with the right side of the fabric up. And the pattern with the print right sides up, I've just placed the other pattern piece, the back on top. And you can see we're gonna have a regular side seam that will be sewn with 5-8 seam allowance. I'm gonna search those edges separately, sew it with a sewing machine and press the seam open. There is a little hip curve there, it's not completely straight. There is quite a nice curve up here on the top, so I do want to stay stitch that to prevent that from stretching out. And over here we have a side seam that comes out and has more volume and there's a mitered corner involved in this area right there. It'll be super easy, it'll be a lot of straight seams basically. <laughs> These are the other pieces I'm going to use for the skirt. 
These are the patch pockets that are gonna go on the hips. There's a slanted pocket opening. I was super careful to cut that and I'm not handling it until I sew on the facing. It's interfaced. I blocked fused that. So that's all ready to go. And I have already searched this edge right here. And what I have here is a yoga waistband. You can sew one with fabric and an elastic inside, but there's a yoga waistband in the pattern and I'm always gonna prefer it because I just find them so comfortable. This knit though, I'm gonna have seams on the side seams because that's the only way I could get my yoga waistband from a little scrap of athletic knit right there. So that'll be a little different, but in the end it's still the same. I'm pinning the facing to the pocket entrance and I'm just being really careful. I didn't manipulate this pocket at all. I put it straight from my cutting table to here. I was really careful. It hasn't stretched out. It's matching really well. And now I'm gonna sew that with 3-8 seam allowance. The interfaced facing is gonna be on top and the pocket is gonna be on the bottom touching the feed dogs here. There's a seam and now we understitch, so I'm just going to extend this, keeping the seam allowance underneath the facing and sewing now on the edge. Now I've turned the facing to the wrong side and I've pinned it and I'm just going to top stitch on the edge. I'm going to do it from the wrong side because it's just easier for me to guide myself along that surged edge there. Okay, so that's done. Another option is not to serge this and fold it in and top stitch, but this fabric is pretty lightweight and drapey and I'm going to avoid it and just try to keep it flat to avoid bulk. That's why I'm doing it like that. Now I'm gonna serge this long end and that long end, and then I'm just gonna go to the iron and press this in by 3 eighths, and then we'll be ready to just top stitch this onto the front. I have hand basted that on right here. Here is the hip. This is the pocket entrance right there, and so, up here on the top, I'm going to baste, so I'm going to use a long stitch length and then I'm going to swap to a regular stitch length and go down and across and then baste again here on the hip and repeat on the other side. After finishing the pockets, I pinned the side seam that won't have the side slit. So it's just a regular side seam. The seam allowance here is 5 eighths of an inch for the side seams. So it's just a really long seam. Okay, so this is the normal side seam that I've just sewn. It's just really long and straight, but the other one is gonna be totally different. This other side seam starts here. This is the hip area. This is where the pocket is sewn, but this is not straight. You can see there's a curved shape and that's because there's a pretty large seam allowance here and it's two folds that we need to do. So I have already surged here from the waistline down the hip and following that little curve finished off there. This long end, you don't need to search because it's gonna be folded twice. So from here down to this slanted area, I'm gonna do a guide stitch at three centimeters, which is one and one quarter inches. Going down to the bottom on this slanted area, this section here is gonna be the hem. And from here, I'm gonna do that guide stitch at one and a quarter inches all the way around to the other side as well. That's gonna help us press that in neatly. Here it's 30 which is a three centimeters or up here you can see one and a quarter inches right there. So I'm gonna follow that line right here to do my guide stitch.
Okay, so we have all of these edges pressed in by one and a quarter inches or three centimeters. And now what we have to do to do the mitered corner is really easy. What we need to do is take this slanted area and put it right sides together and match this up right here. And now we need, just need to sew this little area with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then when we flip it, we're gonna have the double fold. Before flipping this, I'm going to trim the seam allowance to about half of this, just to avoid some bulk there. And now we're going to flip this. And you can see that when you flip it, you get the double fold. So this is what we had already pressed, and now we get the second fold, which is also at one and a quarter inches. So what we need to do now is head over to the iron again and just press this second fold. This one's easier, you have that as a reference. Just feel it with your fingers and then just keep pressing all along the sides and along the bottom of the hem. We still haven't sewn this side seam though, but we need to just press this first. Okay, I've been at the iron pressing the second fold in and I've hand based it flat right there these are the mitered corners they look really really nice the hem has already been hand basted as well now i did press this fold all the way up to the top right here let me unpin this a little bit this side seam that's only partial because the rest of the side is open so we sew from there up to there but i have already pressed this so it's ready for later but i didn't hand baste it all the way because i do need to open this to have access so it's super easy i find these mitered corners super easy and just put a pin there and we'll sew up to that red dot and then we can go and fold this again i'll finish hand basting and then we can we do a really long seam just top stitching all of this down Now that that's sewn, then I can fold this again and that's how the side seams are going to look on the inside. Okay, I've tidied that up, I've finished hand basting all of this and now it's just sewing it. And I'll be doing it from the wrong side so I can see what I'm doing. It'll look the same from the other side anyway. Here's my coastal side split skirt. It's really lovely. This is leftover fabric from a dress I made a few years ago. And it's such an amazing fabric. I think it's one of the best ones I've ever found. Not just because of how it feels, but also the print. I think it's really pretty. And this is gonna go with anything that I wear that's colorful on top. And this is a really safe fabric for me in, in the print and the style and the color and everything. So that's why I chose it because I'm not used to wearing a long skirt. <laughs> but I think it turned out amazing. I have my yoga waistband. Now the original yoga waistband is a little taller. So I just folded it away a little bit and made mine narrower. That's just personal preference. And I had to have seams on the sides of my yoga waistband because I was cutting it from a little piece left over. This is an athletic knit, 10% spandex. You need at least 10% spandex for your yoga waistbands to work. So you can't just use any knit or else it's not going to stay up, you know. My patch pockets, no one's going to see them because it's a print. But they are there and they have quite a bit of space in there. I will never put anything inside. But I thought I had just enough of fabric to do it, so why not? <laughs> you saw that for this skirt, sewing one side seam is like any old side seam. <laughs> but then this one's different. And if you're sewing the version that has the openings on both sides. Just repeat what I did here on the other side as well. It's the same, it's the exact same thing. And inside it's so neat. There's no raw areas. You don't need to search. This is because it's folded twice. And because you have double fabric here, it makes it really stable and weighty and it just hangs really nicely. I always love a good mitered corner. And these are taking mitered corners up a notch from the ones that just have a single fold inside. It was super easy. It didn't take that long to sew. And yeah, I know I'm gonna wear it. It feels amazing on, it feels so soft and drapey, fresh, you know? <laughs> so I have styled it two ways for you to see. One is a summer look and one is a more winter look. I think this could work for whatever. For winter, I just have to put some layers like tights under my boots and, and I'll be fine. So let's see. This is my coastal side split skirt from Pattern Emporium. There are several length options, but I actually lengthened mine four inches just so it's really long. <laughs> 
and I used a really nice linen rayon blend, mainly rayon, and I love how it flows. I don't tend to wear long skirts, but I really like the look of this one. It's so relaxed, super casual. I've got it paired here with my black one shoulder tank from Pattern Emporium, but black and white, I could just wear anything with a color on top, and I'll have a bunch of options for shoes and bags. It's a pull-up skirt, so you can sew on a waistband with the same fabric and put an elastic inside, or in my case, I used a yoga waistband option, super stretchy with a neat and that's also an option in the pattern. There are patch pockets that I did sew on there, although you can't see them because of the print. They are pretty big, easy to sew, and you have quite a nice amount of ease around the hips, about four inches. I think when I make this again, I'm gonna size one size down just for a slightly closer fit. And I only have one side slit here on this version, which is an option, or you can do the slit on both sides. I really like the look. I think this black and white is sort of a safe choice for me, and I know I'm gonna wear a lot with other things. You can see the mitered corners have a double fold and a nice hem and seam allowance there, more than an inch, so it's really nice and firm and really neat. <laughs> Out of my comfort zone for sure, but it's really nice, it's really fresh, I really love it, and I know I'm gonna make it again. Next you'll see it styled for cold weather. This is my coastal size split skirt from Pattern Emporium. They do have some really nice long boots. You know, I could wear tights under the boots here. I think because the boots are black and the skirt is long, I think it just makes you look taller, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's a nice look. You can see the boots through the side that has the opening. I have a red sweater, a little scarf. This skirt could just work for whatever weather I want. I think it's really nice to have pieces that you can wear whenever and just layer up underneath. I love how a long skirt like this looks with boots. For my personal style I think skirts have to be long like this one super long or just at the knee above the knee anywhere in between I start feeling a bit uncomfortable so it's great that you can always modify the length of your skirts I'm super glad I made one and tried it and just got out of that thing about not wearing long skirts because this is definitely a style that I would like to wear. The ones that I'm still on the fence about are the ones that are really full and long, though, yeah, a maxi dress, no way. The other thing I wouldn't do as well is make a top in the same fabric and wear it with this. So for me, it's just too much fabric to be covered from head to toe in the same print. It's just way too much for me, so I wouldn't do that either. I think I'm really happy as well because the fabric choice really agrees with me. And you know, once I start getting used to wearing long skirts again, maybe I'll be a little bit more bold with my fabric choice, you know? To make a navy one. I think that would be a really nice color to have because that goes with everything. So I know I'll definitely be making a long skirt again. It, it's really nice, super comfy. And I actually felt great wearing it. I used to feel that way when I was younger. I don't know why I stopped wearing long skirts, but there you go, me in a almost maxi. <laughs> really enjoyed it. Don't forget that the coastal side split skirt is 15% off through Monday noon in Australia, Sunday night around here, plus a lot of other patterns. So I'll leave you all the links down below. I hope you have an amazing weekend and that is all from me. Bye!